Hello, good morning. It is a lovely Saturday morning, and I'm going to be spending my day starting Horse by Geraldine Brooks. Yes, this is the last novel by Geraldine Brooks that I need to read. I have really enjoyed spending the past few weeks with Geraldine. We've gotten along swimmingly. This will be the conclusion of my little reading project. Ultimately, I think I know what to expect from a book like Horse. I know that it's about a horse as captured in its history, its actual, like, existence, and then researched later on. This seems very akin to People of the Book, which kind of does that whole, like, looking back thing. So maybe... Maybe there'll be some resonance there. I want to read this book and then in this vlog also give you some sort of like wrapped up feelings about Geraldine, about her work, maybe even rank the books based on my experience. But that's the intro to today that I think you need. I haven't started this, I will shortly. Also on the agenda today is I am getting my hair cut, I am meeting Jennifer from Insert Literary Pun Here, I will link her channel below as always. Uh, to do coffee and to go to McNally Jackson. So it's a prime Saturday, like we're set up for success. And I look forward to taking you along the journey with me. Hello, good morning. It's Tuesday, and I'm in the office. Saturday was such a success. I got about a third of the way through Horse by Geraldine Brooks. I'm really enjoying it thus far. I vlogged really well. I met up with Jennifer. I got a book. I got fish and chips. I've been craving fish and chips for a long time. Was feeling great. Was feeling good about my vlogging. And then on Sunday, I remembered that... Persona 5 is now available on the Nintendo Switch, and so I downloaded Persona 5 onto my Nintendo Switch, and then I lost two full days of my life. So um, if you've played the game, you probably know why. It's very engrossing. It's like any anime lover's dream of a video game. And I particularly have watched my friends play it on their consoles, not possessing the consoles available to play the game, but now... I have one that can play the game, and I've played the game, and it's so good. And the only reason why I'm not playing it now is because I'm in the office. And so on my way to work, I read more of Horse by Geraldine Brooks. I will be reading it on my lunch break. I didn't bring my Switch with me. I'm being a very, very good boy. And that's where I am right now. Today is a relatively busy day for me at work. I have a few meetings. I have a lot to get done. And the author of The Whalebone Theater, Joanna Quinn, is coming in today. She's visiting from the UK. She has to film her segment at the Today Show tomorrow. But today she's going around to bookstores. She's coming into the office to sign some stock. I'm so excited to be able to meet her in person finally. I am the marketer for this title. I've been working on this book for a long time and it's a baby project of mine. It's something that I really adore. Not only is the book phenomenal, but Joe has been so wonderful to work with and it was my first solo marketing project that became a bestseller. Now, I was not the only contributor to the reason as to why it was a bestseller, but I am very proud of myself for having done a good job and we're celebrating that today. So the whole publication team that worked on the book, publicist, editor, etc., are going to dinner with Joe. So I have a lot to get done. And so let me talk about this beautiful book. Horse admittedly took a little bit of time for me to get into. We're dealing with a lot of perspectives set across different time periods. And this book in many ways echoes people of the book, but where that book was kind of a one-to-one -one ratio, right? Like a person discovering 
an insect wing in a book leads you to the story of how that insect wing got into the book, you know, this is a little bit more fluid, this is a little bit more intuitive. That the preservation of a skeleton and a painting in 2019 point toward the history of 1850, and particularly it is surrounding a horse, a thoroughbred named Lexington. It's a book about a horse, a very impressive race horse in the 1850s that was like the horse to end all horses. The hype for this horse is very real. And there is a little bit of that sort of like <laughs> horse girl energy in terms of like taming a wild beast. And this beast is like the best and most incredible wind in your hair, riding experience. You know, there's there's a little bit of that, the sort of spiritualistic connection to animals that I think a lot of horse narratives really lean into, but it's not so much that I'm put off, at least at this point. The setup is a bit complex. We have Theo, who is attempting to get his PhD, who has found a painting of this horse and wants to research it. We have Jess, who is like a Smithsonian bones expert, who has uncovered the bones of said horse that happens to be said painting. So like those two come together. And then we have like the historical time period, the like actual horse itself and the people who interacted with that horse. It's interesting in this book to think of like animal as artifact, like living creature as artifact and the way that that has manifested over time that we look to animals in the same way that we look at art, that we look to skeletons and bones, things that moved and lived and breathed in the same way that we look at a painting when it comes to historical research. I'm liking that element of this. There's also a developing commentary on race in America, and I have yet to figure out what particularly Geraldine Brooks wants to say about race in America other than slavery and racism exist. So we'll see where that narrative develops thematically, but it's definitely prevalent. I mean, the opening scene of this book is Theo trying to write a thesis and changing his language, which you know I love a linguistics moment, changing his language to like make his thesis about enslaved people feel more appropriate for like a magazine as opposed to like a PhD thesis. Um, and it's, it opens, like, it opens with that conversation, opens with a discussion of racism and slavery. And the main character involved with Lexington at the time is an enslaved person. And I do have a certain amount of faith in Geraldine Brooks, given how successful I found March to be to discuss the Civil War with a certain amount of nuance and uh, grace. But I'm still curious as to what particular narrative will be drawn when this is also a book about, like, historical research, preservation of art, preservation of bones, biology, chemistry, history, all, all, the, all the cool things. But in terms of like first third impressions, this book is sitting towards the top of the Geraldine Brooks ranking list thus far, and we'll see if that continues to be the case. I am going to now go do my job, and I will check back in with you once I've read more of this book. Hello, good morning. It is the next day and I will check in with you about horse in a moment. But first, we have to go to the Today Show. Hello, it has been several weeks since those previously shown clips, and I have long since finished Horse, but I didn't quite know how I wanted to end my Geraldine Brooks reading journey because, to be honest, it didn't quite end on a miraculous high note. After my adventure to the Today Show, I ended up going back to work, I went to physical therapy. If you're curious, I'm actually officially done with physical therapy. I'm kind of on my own now trying to strengthen my arm, but in terms of like mobility, this is as far as it straightens, this is as far as it bends, I'm stuck with this for the rest of my life. Um, my scar continues to be quite gnarly, but I'm feeling pretty good about the fact that I'll have a decent amount of time 
returned to me, and I still have a lot of home exercises that I get to do, so that's nice. It's your mini little arm update for the day. I, the next day, went to the Metric concert. Metric is my favorite band, um, and I got to see them perform live for the first time. It was kind of like a bucket list concert for me at Brooklyn Steel. I'm not a big concert goer, so it was a, a really exciting experience, and they put on such a great show. I got to hear Gimme Sympathy live. I was so enamored. So throughout my reading experience of Horse by Geraldine Brooks, I was living a good life. I was, uh, good, good things were happening. And I don't think in any way that this like brought my spirits down, but upon completing Horse, I realized that perhaps a project in which I read Geraldine Brooks chronologically and relatively close together in sequence was not the best way to read Geraldine Brooks. In part because I found that Year of Wonders and March were my favorite of her books, and those were the first two books that she wrote. She had written nonfiction previously to her novels. I'm only talking about the novels when I talk about her books here. Year of Wonders is ultimately my favorite Geraldine Brooks novel, and so I feel like it's not necessarily entirely a decline after reading what was my favorite, but I feel like had I spread out my reading over more time or picked them up in a different order, I could have seen Geraldine Brooks more like a comfort author to return to as opposed to like a project to dig into. Horse was ultimately a very entertaining book. I liked Horse. I don't think I talked about the third perspective which was the perspective of a real-life art curator. Martha Jackson is a character who's introduced just before halfway through the book, and I think that her presence nods towards a theme that occurs in other Geraldine Brooks books, which is the accidental preservation of history, which is a theme that I've grown quite fond of in her explorations of history, that the only reason why we might know about certain parts of the world previous to when we were alive is because people happened to preserve a painting. Um, Martha Jackson stumbles across the horse painting in question in this text and decides to keep it. So there's something kind of magical about that otherwise unnoteworthy decision that leads to the discovery of such a rich world before us. I believe I talked about in this vlog the considerations of racism that Geraldine Brooks puts forth in this book. And ultimately, the conclusion of this book, I think, is attempting to drive home some thoughts with regard to the state of America and racism today, especially in contrast to that of the Civil War. And I think ultimately Geraldine Brooks is looking to say something to the light of things haven't entirely improved. And to that I say, Yes, Geraldine, we know. I'm not going to spoil anything about what that ending actually looks like or is, but I will say that to her target demographic, it might actually be exciting, nuanced, groundbreaking, and never before considered. But I think to somebody who is a little bit more engaged with topics of racism, with topics of oppression, with topics of history with regard to race in America, I don't necessarily think we're getting something particularly new here. Not that I think that Geraldine was setting out to get, like, a gotcha, you know? I don't think she was trying to, like, fool you into suddenly having this revelation. It's, it's that I think narratively we're supposed to experience an impact that I didn't necessarily didn't see coming, and therefore, thematically, that impact was pretty weak to me. But overall, like I said, this was a lovely read. I think if, in particular, you are a horse fan, you might particularly love this book, and this might actually be a very good place to start off reading Geraldine Brooks. I'm allergic to horses. They're not my fave, so not really like a driving factor behind my appreciation of the text. And that's kind of all I really have to say about that. In terms of my ranking of Geraldine Brooks books, I have done so. My favorite of Geraldine Brooks's books is Year of Wonders. I think it's just exquisite. I love its debut novel, Sincerity, and I, while 
perhaps could concede that because it is my first Geraldine Brooks that I've read, it is therefore my favorite. I also think that it is just an incredibly strong novel. And what it's focusing on is so much more specific than some of her other texts which tend to sprawl. March comes in second place, and while in many ways I consider March to be a more successful novel than Year of Wonders, I can't necessarily separate my appreciation of March from my love of Little Women, and therefore it takes second place because I feel like without my love of Little Women, I don't know if I would have appreciated March as much as I did. In third place is The Secret Chord. I really liked The Secret Chord. I think it's a good take on Bible retelling. I think it is a strong novel. It reads with as much force as genre fiction. I mentioned that in my previous video and I think that it's uh, a pleasure to read. I think if I were to reread any of these books, this might be the one that I revisit. In fourth place, I'm going to put Horse. I think Horse was ultimately a strong read, and while its, it's thematic overall considerations didn't necessarily hit home for me, I think I had the most pleasure with its characters. Second to last place is Caleb's Crossing. Um, it is Geraldine Brooks does YA, and that that does hit it a little bit lower on the list. And also, I think it's a little bit overlong. I think that the story that Geraldine Brooks sought to tell got lost in the character from whose perspective she was telling the story. I don't know if that sentence made any sense. Uh, just to say that I don't necessarily think it focused on the correct things, quote unquote, and therefore droned a bit in order to come back to what I think was the original intentionality of the text. And in last place for me is People of the Book, which ultimately just feels a little sentimental for my tastes. It is the book for book lovers. It is all about appreciation, love of books. It is literally dedicated to librarians. I think people who adore and hoard books in particular will really like this one. I don't really hoard books. I have one bookcase that is it. That is all I keep, in part because I live in New York City, and therefore I have no space. But while this is ranked lowest on the list, I will say that Geraldine Brooks' worst, in my opinion, is better than many authors' best. So she is an incredibly strong writer. I'm very glad to have read her work, though perhaps not in the way that I think would have been most advantageous for personal pleasure. It was a great time. And thus concludes my Geraldine Brooks reading journey. Thank you so much for joining me along on this journey. If you have any questions about Geraldine Brooks that I perhaps didn't address in my three videos, and I will link those videos below as well, I'll make a playlist or something, um, comment below and we can chat. If you have any questions, thoughts, comments, opinions, or beliefs about anything else that I mentioned in this video, you can put those below as well. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you soon.